This is a very exciting website with so much information. Not only can you find my autobiography here and articles by many scholars about my life and experiences, you can share in Temple's diary written by Claude Ann Lopez, a very special sharing of the personal Franklin. You also have the opportunity to do some puzzles and some games and experience things in a new way that you might not have thought of ever before. It's so exciting to see all of this information being made available to my friends here on the Electric Franklin, a part of ushistory.org, the Congress of Websites. Oh, and most important, don't forget, sign in the guest book. We want to know about you, and we want you to know about us. Oh, good. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> I just got the latest newspaper from Paris, and it only took two months to get here. I, I always look forward to getting the news from France. I, I lived there nine years, you know. I in fact, I can modestly say that I was quite popular there especially with the ladies. <laughs> but that's old news. I want to see what's happened recently. Oh, I know, I know what you're saying. This newspaper is two months old, and that's not news at all by your standards. Well, yes, I can understand your feeling that way. But you see, in my day, getting anything from Europe in two months was doing pretty good. Unpredictable weather, piracy on the high seas, and numerous stops along the voyage meant international news traveled very slowly. And within the country, news could only travel as fast as the fastest horse. And it had to start here, with the setting of single pieces of type. In my days, as editor of the Pennsylvania Gazette and Poor Richard's Almanac, I often did everything reporting, writing, editing, typesetting, and printing. Of course, news delivery didn't begin in my day. <laughs> Primitive societies had runners from one tribe to another. Some cultures used smoke signals or jungle drums. Ancient Rome had its act diurna, news sheets posted in public places. The Chinese had a court gazette in 1000 AD, and newspapers began to appear in Europe shortly after the invention of printing in the 15th century. <laughs> Very interesting. A nationwide daily newspaper. Such a thing would have been unthinkable in my day, even though the nation consisted of only 13 states. I'm told that USA Today is scanned at its headquarters near Washington, D.C., and sent to a satellite 22,000 miles out in space which then sends the signal to 32 printing establishments across the country, which print and distribute the paper every morning. My, my. And we haven't even gotten into radio and television news. <laughs> news at the speed of light. Truly amazing. But we need to talk about your situation. In publicizing your church, your local news media can be useful. Don't neglect the community calendar, which most newspapers have. A mention there is small, but it's free, and is one more opportunity to keep your name before the people. As we discussed in the last lesson on awareness, one of your goals as your church's communication leader is to make sure people know that you exist, to give your church a high profile in the community. Uh, this is often easier to do in a small town than in a large city. Don't ignore the large city daily, but, well, don't be surprised if they don't have room for you every time. Uh, you might find it easier to get into the county paper or a suburban paper. But you have to give your news media something they will want to use, or they simply won't use it. You have to look at your church news through their eyes. Uh, what are they looking for? If you give them what they're looking for, they will be more likely to print or broadcast it. So the first thing you have to do is remember that they are in the news business, not the promotion business. If you want advertising, you'll need to pay for it. So how can you tell if you have a potential news story? Well, there's a saying among news people, 
When a dog bites a man, that's not news. But when a man bites a dog, that's news. So an event is news if it's unusual. Something that happens every week or, or even every year is probably not news unless an unusual angle can be found. Another way to tell if a story is news is the prominence of the people involved. If your conference president comes to your church, that might qualify, but it might not because he is probably not well known to the public. Uh, you might come closer to having a news event if your town's mayor came to your church. And this is one reason why the Seventh-day Adventist Church schedules a community relations day each year to give an opportunity to honor a local person who has made a contribution and to show that the church is involved and concerned about the community. If you have a community relations day, it would probably qualify as news because of the prominence of the person involved. You can get full instructions on how to organize a community relations day as well as supplies like the Community Service Award from your conference communication director. A story is also considered news if it affects a large number of people, if it has consequence. If the event just affects your congregation, it may not qualify, therefore. If your congregation is participating with the other Adventist congregations in your conference, union, or division, then you might be able to show a local newspaper how it affects a large enough number of people to be called news. Now, the fourth important aspect of what makes news is proximity. What territory does your news outlet serve? The closer the story is to that territory, the more likely the editor will consider it news. For instance, a small county weekly concentrates on news within the county. There might occasionally be a statewide story which would run if it had a direct bearing on the county, but almost never would a county paper run a national story. A city daily is usually concerned with a wider area, running national news, but more concerned with the local scene. Uh, if the paper is the biggest paper in the state, well, it may also run a lot of statewide stories. For Adventist church publications, territory is also important. Your conference may have a newsletter which will be likely to print news from your church. Your union paper will also print news from your church if the editors feel it has a broad-based appeal. We'll talk more about writing for Adventist news outlets in the next lesson. The last way to tell if a story is newsworthy is the human interest factor. A story might not be newsworthy under the first four qualifiers we talked about, but it's the kind of story which would cause someone to smile or, or feel empathy. In other words, it will bring an emotional response from the reader because of its human interest. 